Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to be playing Citizen Sleeper, the new Humble Monthly came out, and so this looked like one of the better games in the pack, just based on the ratings. I didn't really look into it at all, so I don't really know what the game is about, but pretty excited to be trying out the new games. Um, let's just get right into it. Oh, character class. An operator, an extractor... I don't really know the difference, so I'll just pick the regular one. First thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect. The delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting. Minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. The first... It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it feels like to be a real person. To be in a body that was indisputably yours. Sure. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day, the sting of blood welling from a fresh wound, the friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach. You can't tell one from the other. The cold slips in, behind and around you, and the sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present, cold, hard, at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You will resist the desire to stretch, knowing the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It, it, it isn't painful, not like you used to know pain, at least. You know, are they describing the economy class of a Frontier Airlines flight? In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease. A reminder that harm is in imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves. Just a warning delivered with the banal equality of a, of a digital notification. Right now there are thousands of them. Uh, okay. You must remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited. And once you got the itch to get out by any means possible, it was either that plan or something much worse. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drift away into the chaos, in the chaos slip into cargo processing, seal yourselves into containers, then just hope the freighter leaves left before you were missed. Some were lost in the shaft, others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers, but the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough, enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even, it, even if, in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach any, de any destination. Let's try to rest. But you are restless. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You are duly aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You have spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It's time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes, the cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth, not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor, sound too, everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then light, white as the cold, softer and softer until a ha in a haze of dirty yellow a figure appears. You are out. Oh. It has been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled into the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edge, where a plasma arc slices them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, you all saw it yet? Almost. Never seen one like you. See, never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have been better preserved. Must have better preservance in Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time, and they weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech. His headset with its glinting eyes, the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches. Its irising eye locking you with an unflinching, unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment, or perhaps he is just figuring out what to do with you. I plan to survive. 
You aren't sure if he hears you. I won't ask you what led you to do it, to sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now. And you are just software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. You nod along. You remember biometrically signing the forms, the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cell. The promise of a life off world, but as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer that person. You are an offshoot, a copy. What you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. S and ARP wants to protect its property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well then no one can. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from other sleepers. Planned obsolescence, a built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you are one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye? The station. You'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freight container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you are welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. Alright, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest, and with that, Dragos stalks back to the wrecks. His drones already converging on a rusting hulk, plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Uh, okay, welcome to Erlin's Eye. Life on the Eye ruins and Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. Select locations by clicking the icon. So, it's my house, huh? Just gonna rest. Okay. So I guess we're like in some kind of uh, dystopian future where corporations can like make copies of people's brains or whatever. You wake up curled up in the corner of the container and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its message is readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all, this, what matters? Um, let's get some answers. It all matters. The past is impossible to escape if it remains a blur. What SNARP did you... What SNARP did to you cannot be forgotten. You need a way of understanding all this before you can move on. Where are you? What is this place? What happened to the others? The questions outnumber the answers. You want to change that, but you'll have to learn to survive first. Dragos of us has left a few comforts in the container. The mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. You thumb the powder stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like damp wood and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images from your restless sleep come back to you. A ring like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. A stellar constellation of bright polygonal shapes like angular suns burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images and it is, a long, it is long after you finish drinking before they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. Okay. Ooh, dice. I like dice. I'm a big fan of dice. Uh, your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle, but can also be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. Uh, that's the top bar. You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals that were keeping you alive. Uh, at the start of each cycle, you roll your action dice. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. The number of dice rolled is based on your current condition. The worse your condition, the fewer dice you roll. Once you have used your dice, you cannot make any further actions. Okay, that makes sense. Energy, you need to eat. You can refill your energy by eating. Uh, it goes down two segments each cycle. 
If it becomes empty, you're starving. And then... You see, you start losing condition when you're hungry. And you lose twice as much. Okay, so if this bar empties, I lose the top bar twice as fast. And the top bar determines how many dice I have. So if things go bad, they get worse very quickly, is what this is telling me. Um... Do I just leave? Dragos is standing in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it is implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Not good. The drone chirps. Dragos nods. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe, he pauses. So, I'm not going to chit-chat too long. You well enough to work? Uh, I figured. I mean, if he's going to keep me alive, he probably wants me to carry my weight, right? All right, then, he nods. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old holds down, sell them off to the shipyards or to the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. And obviously, I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Is that just money? These, he pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Airwall, cryo, isolated from the market. It's what we use for trade out here. Okay. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick you can. And sleepers, well. But things being the way that they are for me at the yard, I need help. Why? Things are a little tight, that's all. I owe a little cryo to a client here or there. He pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresh. There's plenty to do. I'm gonna help this guy pay off his gambling debts. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone help hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. Yep. All right, the yard. So we interact with actions to perform an action. Click and drag your chosen action dice. Um, each action rewards us with clock progress, energy, condition, or items depending on their outcome. So positive, neutral, negative. Okay, okay. Action dice affect the situation as follows. 100% chance of positive, 50% chance positive, 50% chance neutral, 25. Okay, so. Ones and twos are bad. Threes and fours are in your favor, but sometimes bad. Fives are good, and sixes are great. That's pretty straightforward. Well, like uh, skill checks in D&D, I guess. Action displays information about their type, risk level, and skill, and modifiers that apply to the action. Uh, either critical or repeatable. You can only perform a critical once. Safe, risky, or dangerous actions. That's down there. Safe, nothing bad happens. Risky, negative means something bad happens. Negative means... Um, negative means outcome means condition losses. Neutral, outcome can mean crack. Oh, I see. So if you do these, even if you get a neutral, you get something bad that happens to you. So you have to do a five or, or a six, I guess, to guarantee a good outcome. And then skill that this action requires, either engineer, interface, endure, intuit, or engage, okay? And a modifier it gives you that is added to the dice. I see. All right. So I can dissect the hull, which just takes it apart and gives me something. Um, and then it'll start filling in this thing. I can also do a manual salvage which is going to, I mean, it's just the harder one, I guess. It's So this one's safe, but I get a lower roll, and this one's risky, but I get whatever I put in. So let's put a four in here, and we'll just put a one in here since it's a safe action. Okay, so now it's telling me about the clocks down there. When they fill, they do something. Cycle clocks. These clocks fix themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Okay. So yeah, that didn't fill in. I guess it's only when I go to sleep or something like that. Also, I don't know if I got a good outcome or not. It didn't really tell me. After hours of careful slicing... Oh, I see. It didn't give me anything. So I can try this one now. Uh... 
That's a 50-50. It's pretty risky, but let's try it. In Citizen Sleeper, you unlock drives as you discover more about yourself and the world. Drives guide you in pursuit uh, in pursuing specific objectives, depending on which path you wish to take. You can track drives, and any track drive will place a yellow marker on locations that will help you pursue your goal. Access your drive menu via the arrow button at the top left of the screen. This button? That's not an arrow. Oh. You are now free to explore Erlen's Eye and make a life for yourself here. Try tracking a drive to help you survive. Look for food to keep your energy up. Fill clocks. Remember to end cycle at your home when you are out of dice. Use mouse wheel or W and S. Rotate the view with A and D. Okay. Ooh, I got a negative outcome. Wait, but I still got five cryo. Interesting. You ache from hammering away at the scrap. Most of it crumbles into worthless rust. You call it a day early before you injure yourself. Uh, I kind of want to see... What is this? Is this my money? Yeah, I think that's my money. Data. I have items and data. So let's leave. I'm supposed to find a doctor. Let's see what is over here. Merchants willing to run the gauntlet of Helion Station are rare, but those who, that do will always return eventually. Okay, so this is just going to go up. And I guess a merchant will show up and maybe sell me some stuff. Okay. The space station's pretty big. Oh my god, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's find a doctor. <laughs> and then another one is to repay Dragos. Okay. So... A terminal, a wet dog. This says a a dot over it, so let's go here. I can ask for directions. This one's dangerous, though. That means I have, like, a bad chance of succeeding, right? This one's risky. I can explore the market. That one's also a 50-50. Let's go ahead and explore a bit. Uh, neutral, I got some uh, local knowledge, and that filled up this bar a little bit. Okay. Oh, I found the doctor. That's good. Next comes the call from the enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now that you are here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer of the, on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block, they have all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few, and without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will... You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Um, let's look at the Enforcer. The Enforcer is looking down the corridor and you dare to glance at him. His purpose is unmistakable. He is there to intimidate, to threaten, and if necessary, carry out those threats. His broad shoulders are framed with a metal exoskeleton. A couple of mirror-like implants sit below his eyes like mercury teardrops. Subsidiary sense input or aesthetic markers, you aren't sure. You also aren't familiar with the geometric blade-like tattoo on his arm. But you make a note of it. You avert your eyes when he looks back at the queue. After a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in warm light. A floor-to-ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market's sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And, for a moment, you are transfixed by the motion. Come, sit, calls a sharp voice, and you see a silhouetted figure turned away replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. I guess this is the doctor? Wearing, like, a poncho? The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak. They blink, and then quickly regain their composure. They sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. You sit. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you first entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably itched, etched across their face. How long have you been on the station? They ask, a scanner still to their eye. A few cycles. This is my first cycle. <laughs> they nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. 
They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. Essen Arp doesn't like to see his proprietary technology let loose. To prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping, they built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one which Essen Arp remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yep. Good. That may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you are unsure if they mean for the cold touch or of the metal or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm, and SNARP has no reason to release stabilizer into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something, anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. They sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes, hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside? You nod. He works for my benefactor, Yatagan. Yatagan? They are influential in the low end. They give me this space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to, to their implants, soup their wounds. They look away. But Yatagan has connections, smugglers from the sta Starward Belt. Mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This, this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive. But I think we can do it. Yeah, you know, why are you helping me? Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face, but the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. Oh, well, that was nice. The doctor is pretty helpful. I can go back there. And go to the low end gate. There's this dock here. If I were to go back to the doctor, there's not anything to do here at the moment. I can go back to the scrapyard. Let's see if we can help over here with my last dice, because this dice is not that great. So we can just do this. I got plus five cryo. And it was a negative action, but I guess this is maybe like the tutorial one where you can just do things safely. Because nothing bad happened to me. So, that's all I can do. I guess we just go home and go to sleep. Right? I'm starving now. <laughs> this time you don't wake up. Instead of the ghosts of the station, that shifting skeletal ring surrounds you. For a moment you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, thread, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes that connect to you. You see the station. No, you feel the station, like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Touch it. You find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers, and then you try, in a moment of impulsiveness, to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice a tucking feeling, pulling at you, insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored, and then it's gone. 
Okay, so I got a one, a four, and a two. It's not particularly great. I need to find some food. Where could I find some food? Shipyard. I can assist the shipbuilder. I can haul materials. That's not going to help me. Let's see if we can find scrapyard. What's in the dock? So merchants will come in a couple days. There's this rotunda. Filled with passageways and concourses leading to all kinds of docking bays. Getting to know rotunda doesn't mean just mean new places to visit. It all means keeping your eye on new arrivals too. Um, I don't think this is going to be helpful for me. I really need to find some food. But what's a wet dock? It takes several cycles to reach the starward belt and return, loaded with scrap from the old wrecks. Okay, that's not helpful. There's the doctor, bustling. I mean, there's probably food at the market, right? There's also this passage. Input. Oh, I see. You have to pay to unlock the next area. So. I feel like I'm just gonna explore the market with my bad dice. See what we get. Some local knowledge. Okay, okay. Got pretty lucky there. And then, did that unlock anything? Ah, oh, there we go. Some food. That's what I needed. Emphis is busy, his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. His other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red fleck dressing. The smell is incredible. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with the bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, handing over payment. You join the queue. It's mostly made of off-duty salvagers. Vac suits unzipped and rolled down to expose stained vests, scrubby mods, a lattice of scars and tattoos. They discuss the best food on the eye, the best drink. Comparing notes on bright market dives, their words cut through with heavy spacer slang. Eventually, it's your turn, and you shuffle to the front. Emphasis, oh, sorry, Emphis speaks in a deep, even tone without looking up. First try is free. Thank him. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy, the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire, and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers, Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. A hard life, a lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Tell him a story. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye and he nods as you cook. His eyes never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility and its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container and the endless cycles spent within it. Now it seems, you tell him, like some dream that you once had but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and that you are unsure where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually, you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time, we can talk some more, he smiles. But next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against the button on the burner side and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time, then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins the to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across its forearms, each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin marks. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. Yes, I got food. Um, what is this? Get to know Emphis? Okay. I mean, I could use some more food. Get this bar all the way filled up. Order some fungus. It costs most of my money, though. I think I'll wait. Because uh, it looks like it fills up three bars. So I'll wait till the next day and then do it. And in the meantime, let's go and help Drago out some more. Uh, I feel like this one we can maybe do. Oh, so this is probably a bad thing, right? 
Yeah, I need to be able to have enough money to help Drago pay his debts. And I need a lucky haul. So let's do this, because this one seems to be more likely to let me get a positive outcome. <laughs> positive outcome. Nice. Back in business, 15 cryo. Beneath the pockmarks hole, you find hidden containers. Alloy plating and wire bundles thick as your arm, preserved in their trunking. Okay, so I need to fill this up before this one fills up, I think. We'll put this one here because this one's safer, I guess. What happens if I put it here? Yeah, I think I will... You know, I'll just take the chance. It's a 50-50. Nice. I got a neutral outcome. So, a bunch of money. And, uh... Making good progress on that. I don't think I can eat. Or do I? Is it is it fine for me to come here? Because I don't actually... Yeah. Because it doesn't actually take up a, na a dice. So, let's go ahead and eat. Fill up the rest of my hunger. Got some energy. I got... Plus fungus fan? Oh, I see. It doesn't have, make you have like a conversation with him each time. And I guess we'll go to bed. Pretty good day. We're full of food. Hopefully this will fill up a little bit. And it went down by one. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads you see bright shapes, caches of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, and then leap off into the void. You begin to understand that these are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops, but it's but that it seems there are so many loops that it seems almost impossible to parse, but you begin to try. Now let's focus on the nodes. The nodes are glassy, bright, but in all this flow, the only solid and fixed points. You approach one, a pyramid, or a triangle, dimensions are difficult here, and lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse any further, the glass clouds and hardens, cutting you off. The threads and nodes, passages and puzzle boxes, one leads to another. There's so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape and ex uh, this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then that insistent tugging again, pulling at you, you look down again and see two lines, two threads pulling in different directions as if they were tied around you. I mean, there's no way to know which is better. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it and this time you see something, a sphere shimmering above a strange angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. The first thread leads out away from the station into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is appro approaching ever closer with each cycle. Yikes. You open your eyes, time is short. Okay, I need to get deeper into the station, is what I got out of that. I'm being hunted. Scary. Uh, something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While you can use dice and items to access systems and extract data, but be careful, these networks are old and strange. Click the eye at the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. Okay. Oh. Interesting. Whoa. Okay, so I need data to do this. Is there some way of obtaining data? Um, data actions allow you to extract data from the networks of the eye. They work like dice actions, but you, okay, so you have to match an exact die. Um, you can use any die that matches the display's dice. So I need a two. So will this work because I have a plus one? No. Oh wait, do I need to push it over here? Oh, okay. Okay, so I can bypass. What does that do? I'm a little confused. So I just need a two. Okay. Do I want to use my dice on this? I do want to kind of see what it is. Okay. 
I got one piece of data. And that one's empty now. So there's this node. I don't have a two anymore. I can't use the five, right? Because it needs to match exact. Okay. There's a one. I feel like these, I should probably do these when I can since... I need an exact roll. Or at least that's what I understood. We got an encrypted key. Oh, there's different kinds. Interesting. As you drift back from the node, something latches onto you. A thread strung tight around you. It leathers you in place. It tethers you in pace. place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. It's source somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown. Astringent. Processing. Let's just stay still. Please hold. Oh my god, it's the hunter. The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It is blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What did you do? The shape paces around you on lithe legs. There's, though there is no ground here to pace on. I, entity, identify, origin, serial, cadence. The figure faces you expectantly. Sleeper, as an arp? I don't feel like I should tell you anything. Refusal, the figure's strange head rotates. Brackish signature. Of and not of. Attempting interface. As the figure speaks, more threads begin to spiral from its head. Thick, snaking, vine-like ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Stop. The figure halts its threads, its head twitching. Entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? Uh, yeah, I'm a person. Incorrect. You're an entity. All at once, Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste, the one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. I will find access. I will interface. Sealed dock? An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be diverted from my task. It glows with murderous intent. Strike. You lash out with all your force. Not a physical strike, but a focusing... A spear of interface interference leaping out like the tip of a spear. Hunter stumbles, shifts, separates. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station light, shaking with fear. Well, that's not good. <laughs> so there are all these gates that I can access with some type of data. Um... This one requires a three. A bunch of agents. Okay, I feel like that's enough of this. I should probably do something with my five. Um, I lost two food last round. The doctor is going to have my medicine soon. So let's just go... What is this one? The wet dog? Okay, so a salvage sortie is coming. I should probably try to have some money. So let's go back to the yard and uh, use our dice. This is like a guaranteed good outcome, right? Or it's like guaranteed positive or neutral. Well, let's do that. <laughs> nice. Got some money. Made some progress on that. And that's all we got. So let's end the second. Round a five, a one, and a one. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wake up, wait up. Fung is coming down the corridor towards you, a wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. I don't know who you are, but that's okay. You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around. Just want to chat. You saying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for us all? Nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. We? 
you pass together into the main walkway. Havenage, we are all one dysfunctional family. Fung puts an arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch though. Don't worry, I'm with systems. Systems. Everything the eye runs on. He runs a hand along the passage wall. This place is a ruin, but systems keeps it spinning somehow. At least we try to. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I saw you around and well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a little proposition for you. He glances around, but this is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then when you are settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. Okay, okay. Gonna hook me up with some work, it sounds like. It looks like you can also come work here, right? Yeah, you can like do this stuff. You can try to get in with the ship builders. Um... I want to try to finish the, uh, this thing. So I'm going to use my five on this. Hopefully I get the plus two outcome. Oh, I only got a plus one. That's not good. Okay. So let's go back to the doctor. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshiro's implants, like the cat's eye in the dark of the corridor. He nods you he nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark and you push through with the sheeting into the surgery. I have it. Sabine stands with a case open in front of them, a set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it in the warm light. I have no idea how yet again they trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it really is what it appears to be. The test case? That seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. They gesture for you to sit on the bed. The stabilizer works under a simple principle to an immunosuppressant in a transplant operation in that it stops your body from rejecting the unfamiliar part of itself. In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ groups, which over time are identified by your body as foreign material and therefore must be eliminated. Sabine holds up a vial of the would-be stabilizer. However, unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains which act as passcodes within your immune system. The stabilizer refreshes those passcodes, keeping your frame from rejecting all of its own organs. Yikes. So in the future, the pharmaceutical companies just hold you literally hostage instead of holding your medicine hostage via high prices. Uh, which means, which means the stabilizer should be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. They glance away, at least if the stabilizer is genuine. The only way to know for sure is to inject the vial. They begin readying the syringe. I will start with a small dose to limit the risk. Okay, let's do it. Sabine cracks the glass neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe and you watch as if any sign might emerge from the clear liquid. You barely feel the needle. Your frame registers the initial injection, but with little response. A sensation begins to spread from the sight, a fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white, and when it returns, Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light has slowly fade into darkness as you settle back against the bed. You swim in darkness. Muffled noises, like an argument heard from underwater, prickling waves of cold. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting in a chair by the window, facing away from you, backlit by the glow of their slate. Awake? Yes. The stabilizer is genuine. They sit down beside the bed. I don't know how Yadigan acquired a case of this stuff, but they did. Sabine looks troubled, distracted. You should rest some more, but you are going to have to do that somewhere else. They gesture to the door. I have other patients. Sorry. Um... Well, I guess that's reasonable. Sabi nods towards the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You are going to need to pay for your next dose. Silence fills the room and they return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow, as if things have moved or shifted. You wonder how long you have been out. Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. 
You manage to get to your feet and wander out into the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you with a glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past, somehow faintly aware of the station spinning beneath you. Okay, so that filled up my sta my stability bar. That's good. And I assume I can just come back here to buy more. Oh my god, it's expensive. Yeah, so, uh, as I said, just literally holding me hostage now. Let's buy some fungus. Nice. Got some energy. And let's see, we still have two dice. If we get lucky, we can actually fill this up. So let's try it. And uh, do I want to... I feel like wands are good to use on this because it's safe and it can't go... It seems like it can't go below a one. So this is basically just like... Kind of like upgrading it to a two in a way. Okay, got some cryo. Okay, let's see if we get lucky. No. Oh, that's all right. We can finish it the next day, hopefully. And is there anything I can do with these? Or do I need energy for it? Because I think I have this, right? I need a Havenger Cypher. Oh, I just have data and a key. And an agent. So the agents all need dice. The gates all need ciphers. And the nodes all need dice as well. That's probably all I can do. Alright, let's go to sleep. This is pretty cool. It's like an RPG, but instead of like walking around, you have like these dice and the story's like progressing against you by, ooh, wow, look at this, this is a good roll. The story's like progressing ag against you by having these actions like progress every day. So that's pretty neat. I like the mechanic. All right, let's fung. Sleeper, fung catches your attention as you approach the Havenger building leaning against the bay door to the side of the entrance. You approach. Easier to come in this way, security and all that. He gives you a look, you know. He slams a button, the bay creaks open, blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Fung inside. Truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates and things you don't recognize that glow with blue screen light. There is a chorus of hums that blends into a single wave of static, filling the dark corners of the room. Fung leans on the server stack and gestures around you. You like it? Uh, what is all this? He taps a nearby server stack which bleeps in response. This is my treasure trove. All dredged up from the sea of systems we call the eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. It's probably running on like Windows 95. He steps over to a towering block speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station. AE1? The one Solheim built. We've had to invent new components, repair things we've never built, reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Residents here look up at the eye and think they are seeing a constant, a concrete reality, but this place is a system in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. We are keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. He stops. At least, that's what I'm trying to do. He turns back to face you among the flickering machines humming all around you. I know you can see this too, Sleeper, all those systems and sections. You can't, can't you? Yes. It makes sense, right? You are between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. That's what I need. You glance at the lights around you, and as you do, they seem to flicker, to realign, to follow your gaze. Fung notices it too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you are on the run, though. They are tracking me. He pets you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place. Subsystems I can't see. Access protocols lost to time and decay. Secrets. A shitload of secrets. With your help, I can unlock this place. Break off those last ghost limbs of corporate control. He lowers his voice behind the hum. Even in the Havenage, there is old growth. Those whose roots trace back into those bad old days. You help me dredge up the past, and I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. He winks. What do you say, sleeper? Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good deal. Fung pumps his fist and claps you on the shoulder. He meets your eye. You won't regret it, sleeper. Fung passes you a ragged-looking metal tab. 
A gift, he smiles. It's a Solheim cipher. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate and you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets from the nodes inside. He walks you back to the front of the bay. Start by bringing me whatever you can turn up. Use that emulated mind of yours to see what's out there. Let's get a picture of how things are. Those above, he nods at the ceiling, have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you for whatever useful data you bring in. I know you need it. He slams the door button again. Keep it quiet and keep it clean, sleeper, and I'll see you soon. You step, blinking, back out into the passage, those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. Okay. Um, I mean, that's pretty good. He gave me a, a cipher, right? Solheim cipher? I think that was for this middle one. Yes, all right, all right. I got gate S7 access. What does that do? Does it just give me all these gates here? Is that what this is? Yeah, so it unlocks more of these nodes. Does it unlock anything in the uh, in the real world? And it doesn't look like it. But I can probably talk to him, right? Oh no, he wants me to find data. But I don't have any Solheim data right now. I have like that other data. And it looks like there's some uh, scrap freighters here. Buy some scrap. Most of what comes in from the steward belt is corroded trash, but sometimes something valuable can be found. Input 20 cryo. So I can buy some crates. The freighter will stay docked for as many cycles as it takes to offload its haul of scrap into the haven and yards. The freighter crew are eager to get their payload into the ORT exchange and they'll pay a wage to anyone willing to help them. So I can unload these containers and presumably they pay me a lot of money. I could use my six on that. Um, let's go ahead and buy some of this. So what did we get? A random scrap item. And I used up some of this. Scrap components. Useful salvage to the right person. Interesting. Um, I mean, I'll just buy all of them, right? There's no point in not doing it. And I have my, sta my stability bar all the way up, so... Just buy the last one. Hopefully these are useful for something and I'm not just wasting all my money. <laughs> uh, okay. Bought all that. Let's leave here for now. I want to finish the scrapyard. Let's try with the one again. Maybe we'll get lucky here. Because we only need one, so there's no point in using one of our bigger dice rolls if we can get this one. Well, we didn't get it, so... Let's go ahead and do this now. Nice. We finished this. So... Um, did I do it? It's full. I can't do these actions anymore, so maybe something happens when I... when I finish the day? Oh, I can go talk to him. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across the vast, the vast dark shape, suspended below the dome. They flicker across the scorched hull plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. She's a beauty, isn't she? Drago stands to the side, focused on the hulking ship as it lowers into the yard. What is it? That, my friend, is A-grade scrap. I should thank you. This place was its, on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Drago's for this monstrous craft. You can't help but think of what became of its crew. What happened? What do you mean? He glances at you. I managed to convince our salvager friends to give me, give it to me on credit. That's what happens. No, what happened to the ship? Not my concern, he shrugs. The ship cracks like a calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I know I said you shouldn't stick around, but I'm going to need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the hulk, their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull. Dude, why are you taking things out on credit when we're already going to die because of your debt? Watching you, wa watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion, locked inside that container, the wreck of an Essen Arp freighter lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Or was the container delivered to Dragos on its own, a womb for your rebirth into this strange station? You shudder. 
Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Drago squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we are up to it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on its side. Winter Light. Sure, why not? He claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Um. So, whoop. I completed my first drive. Each drive completed unlocks an upgrade point. Oh, you can upgrade your character. Okay. <laughs> oh, so these are like upgrading my my stats in D&D, basically. Right now I have a plus one to this. I have one upgrade point. Um. So I can't upgrade this one because it's already upgraded, right? I can make this not be a negative. It'll switch from being a... I guess it'll go from a negative one to a zero. I can upgrade engineer. I see. Oh, there's also like a side benefit as well. Chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions. Mm, dice actions to p display potential outcomes. Ooh, that's very good. Chance to gain energy after entering engage action. And then these, oh, I see. Once this is full, you can keep going this way. Agent nodes give double data rewards. Um, I'm not really sure if it's better to, like, specialize or be a generalist at the moment. But we can maybe decide based on the secondary abilities. This gives a discount on all actions that are cryo actions. This lets me re-roll my dice. That seems very good. Uh, this lets me keep two dice even when I'm, like, dying. Um, use scrap components at home to repair condition. So this lets me not have to buy the medicine, I guess, or maybe, like, buy it less often. I feel like this is probably the best. I'm going to do that one. So that's upgraded. And then... Wait, did I do this wrong? I couldn't click on that before, right? Yeah, I don't think I could. So I guess I've unlocked this, and then I can get the plus one, and then I can start doing this. That's a lot of points that it takes to unlock things. Okay. That might be it. That might not have been the best choice. I thought it was just gonna be two points, but it looks like it might be three points to get what I want. Do we get a new thing here? Um, predictive reasoning. Interesting, this gives me a perk. Investigating the winter light means picking through its systems and structures with care. You won't pay, but you may find out. This is the perk that lets me see the result. Um, the wreckage, the wrecked cutter Dragos has brought in to salvage has a history of dis to discover if you are curious. Um, and I can just keep cutting up stuff. Dragos seems increasingly nervous about your presence at the yard. You're not sure he's going to hold his nerve much longer. Why does he not like me here? I thought we were friends. Okay, that's weird. That's kind of mean. Can I use this for something? I don't think so. I mean, I can do this. Get plus plus to winter's light. It would be cool to discover the history of it. Uh, five. I feel like what I want right now is to eat, though. Get back my missing energy. Pretty close to filling this up as well, which is nice. And I don't need to go to the doctor. I already bought all the scrap. I could unload some containers. It looks like all you get is money, though. I'm not sure I want just pure money. Yeah, see, this that perk is so good. Now I know, like... I can, like, figure out what the best action to take is. Because this is another job I can do, right? So this gives me plus two to yard hand, but it reduces my condition, which I obviously don't want to do. This one just makes it so that I lose energy. And that seems fine. Interesting. And then my only other option is... To... What happened to the, uh... 
Is it here? The rotunda? Yeah, I could do this. So this will give me plus three to dock washer, but minus minus to condition. That's pretty bad. This is minus energy and plus two to dock watcher. Um, so you don't want to get too caught, I guess. I feel like I kind of want to do this. It, I might be able to get it in one go if I get lucky, right? Or no, I have a 100% positive outcome, so I'm like guaranteed to get this. <laughs> yeah, I just got it. Nice. I was I think that was pretty good use of that. <laughs> Did that unlock anything new? It looks like I got this mercenary. Hey you, you want to earn a chit? Ankita stands beside a huge pile of tied together whole plates. She stretches out her back, her shoulders bulging beneath her flight suit. Make it two. Ankita laughs. This goddamn station. She sighs and pinches the bridge of her nose. All right, come here then. You cross the docking concourse as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is this place? She asks as she angrily lashes the massive plates together. Everyone wants their cut. She straightens up to an impo imposing height, her armor plates creaking and looks you up and down. Or is it just that you all think I'm an easy mark? You look the part. I don't know if she's like into humor or not. Uh, she laughed at my first joke, so. Ankita laughs again. This you mean? She taps her armor. You got me pegged then? A big dumb merc with more chits than sense, is that it? It just looks expensive. That's fair, rude, but fair. Ankita hoists one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. Come on then, enough chat. You've got to earn those chits. You struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do eventually. Ankita gives you a look, ships this way, and she sets off down a gantry at impressive speed. As you catch up to her, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of stevedores? Stevedores? Oh, what's all this for? Oh, this? She nods at the plates on her back. I'm building a treehouse. She gives you another of her looks. It's for the ambergris, that cutter you might have seen sitting silent out, yet, out there. She rapidly turns another corner as you trail behind. She got cut up pretty bad on our last job, and I had to moor up here for a spell. But since then, it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mine, so now she's gone dark. She shifts the panels on her shoulder. The upshot is that I'm short one ship mine, with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind I'd been stranded. So yeah, it's been a time. Uh, I can help. I don't know. Got a ship mine tucked away on that frame of yours? For a moment, you aren't sure she's serious. Ankita swings the plates from her back, almost knocking you over in the process. This is me. She holds the second bundle off your shoulder. You're the first person I've met here who might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottom lick. lip. Look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. She passes the bundles of plates through the Amber, gaze, Amber Gris's outer lock and then turns around. Just don't go spreading all this around. Ankita throws you a couple of chits. She gives you a parting nod and ducks through the doorway. All right, get out of here. She calls back and the lock slams shut. Okay, new drive discovered. Wow, there's a lot of stuff I can do. So I can study my ship, work with her and Ketis, I think it was, to fix her ship, get to know Emphis better. Um, I feel like what I need to do is disable my tracker though. <laughs> because I don't want that guy to find me, right? So I should probably do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, there's just so much to do. What are all these yellow things? Does that mean there's like something that I can do? Um, where am I? This wasn't a place I could go to previously, was it? There's a bar now and a dock. Oh, the maglock. I think I can open this, right? These old maglocks look like each they need a key, so I need two keys. I mean, there's not really any point in doing this yet, if I only have one key. Because there might be something else I can open with one key. I can buy some food. Uh, if you're, uns you're unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but this fungal drink fermented along the greenway seems like a good test. So I can buy some alcohol. <laughs> And I guess I just buy alcohol to make me make people trust me more. Okay, so I need some more money. 
this doesn't give money. This just fills up this bar. So I'm going to start filling... Let's see what we can see on this other thing instead. I just unlocked a bunch of these, right? Can I use this on it? Yeah, no, I can't. Um, were there any that required a six? Because if so, I should probably use those. I would like to use one if, I, if there's one that requires a six. And then use the other one to make some money or something. A two... A one. I guess that's a good place to use my ones, because they're not very good for anything. Hmm. Alright, well, I just need to make some money. What does this person have to offer? I can improve the ship. <laughs> um, need to be careful not to ground it, though. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a dangerous action, but gives you a plus one. You can also only do it once. <laughs> uh, this seems fine, right? I'm guaranteed to succeed. Um, so now it's just going to be repairing on its own. That's pretty good. That's a lot of value right there. And I want some money because I'm going to need to buy food and stuff soon. So can I get some money from this? This gives me cry and yard clearance. <laughs> uh, I'll do this one because it's a dangerous action. <laughs> okay, so we got some money and this filled up a little bit. So now we're done. And we can go to bed. I'm being hunted. Scary. Okay. Got some fours, a two, and a couple ones. I assume these are actually random, right? Otherwise, there'd be no point in it being like a dice thing. Um, where should we start? So, how about we go to the market first? I'm missing one local knowledge. So, how about we use our two? This might make us lose a bit of energy. So, let's actually use the one, because if we lose the energy, it's not a big deal, because we can eat, just eat some food anyways, which I want to do. Okay, so it passed. Um... I'm not sure if we unlock anything from that. Yeah, we got this ort exchange. And unlocked a new drive. Build a ship mind? Oh, I see. I can build a ship mind to help her with her ship. Uh, right. Oh, it's a gambling thing. That seems like it might be pretty broken, right? Because I can tell ahead of time what the rewards will be, and what the loss is, if I lose. Um, so they can buy scraps from me. What do I get? I paid 20 for this, right? Uh, that was not good. But it gives me slow access to this thing here. So I guess it's like you're paying a little bit of money to gain their trust. That seems worthwhile to me. Hopefully I don't need this crap for something else, though. Okay, so they, they kind of trust me a little bit more. And... Do these guys have any more scrap that I could buy? No, they're out. This will just give me a bunch of cryo. There's a small chance I get a negative outcome. Which it doesn't say what it is. Um... I don't think I want to do that at the moment. I want to see how you're doing. I don't have to do anything for this. It's just going to repair itself. If I get like a high roll and I want to rush here for some reason, I can do that. I don't know why Dragos is going to like hate me after a while. That seems bizarre. So I do want to do both of these. 
So let's do these. Nice. I'll do this one as well. I only got one that time. That's okay. And then we're going to go to the digital place and use our our low rolls to trigger some of these things. Because I think some of these require a one and a two, right? So this requires a two. Give me a little bit of money. Is that all it gave me? Oh, right, you have to click the other button. <laughs> um, oh, I got another key, which means I can go unlock that door now. That's a two, right? Can't do that one. <laughs> What does this one require? Two. I wish I just told you what they require so you didn't have to click into them all. Two. Ooh, that one requires a four. Oh, here's the one. I knew there was a one. Oh, some Solheim data. Nice, nice. Somebody was looking for that, right? I think that was a... What's-his-face wants those. Four... Where's the one that requires the keys? Is that in the real world? I think it was. Um, I think it was this one. <laughs> yeah. I need two of these keys. One. <laughs> okay, I opened it. What's inside? A mysterious machine. It looks like a vending machine. <laughs> As you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discarded tubing and rusted plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape, settled into an alcove in the side of the dock. A kind of upright cabinet. It is covered in faded logos and messages, from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor. Intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vessels. The manufacturer is listed as Neovent, and you remember an advert from long ago squeezed among all the off-world recruitment drives that assaulted every planet-born citizen, which chirpily sang that name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen, thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Wow, that's the worst. You, like, work for these people, and they make you pay for the stuff that you need to do the job that they hired you to do. That's just awful. Enter your registration, chirps a pre-recorded message, catching you off guard. Now just press some keys. You reach for the keypad, and something begins whirring. At first, it sounds like servo motors stirring up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, then a multitonal voice that emanates from Neovend. Entity, they hiss, speak with me. Oh god, it's the hunter. There is a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing or intake of breath, before the machine speaks again. I have need of you. You have need of me. That squeal comes again, and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place, so that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring, whining noise. You are in danger. Are you the vending machine? <laughs> a squeal. Chose this vessel for its seclusion. Please listen. The machine creaks. You are marked for deletion, Entity. Hunter tracks you. The screech rattles through the empty dock. You remember the strange head, the figure, the threads closing in. Hunter. The Hunter Protocol. They taste your signature. The sudden wine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. You close your eyes and the skeleton of the station starts to thrum. Emulated minds are adaptable. Move where neurons cannot. The mechanism resets. But emulation makes, your, makes you target. Adaptable. Yes, you can move through networks, clouds, hardware, software. Neovend winds. But you cannot hide there. Hunter is there. The servos judder the vending machine's casing as they reset. Hunter searches for me, also. Hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine. An unusual hiding place, for sure. You can counter Hunter. But need entity outside machine. The light flickers. Need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, ghostly, threaded, the cloud. 
Points along the rim glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build nests, explains Neoven. Masters are gone, but continues hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nests. Where are the masters? Station builder, Solheim, the machine rumbles impatiently. Long gone. Their protocols still haunt. Bring offerings. Save cell, Neoven says pointedly. Mutual need means friends, they conclude, tired of the conversation. The whirring amplifies and then suddenly drops as mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades and you are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock, that whirring voice ringing in your ears. Okay. So that seems good. I feel like that is what I should do because that can help me hide from the hunter who's like trying to find me, right? So you need hunter data. And presumably there should be some hunter nodes now. Yeah, there they are. How do I raid the nest? I just use dice. That's pretty straightforward. And there's a couple of them. What rolls do they need? A two, a one, and a two. Okay, so two twos and a one. That seems pretty straightforward. And I think I'm done for the day here. So let's go to sleep. Get some more dice. Okay. Decent rolls. So... Let's go back to the shipyard here. I would like to get the remainder of these two, but it's only a 50-50 chance. I think this is fine, though. Let's see if we get lucky. Ah, we didn't. I got a one. Wait, did this go down? Huh. Let's try again. I really want this, because it's almost full. I want to see what happens. Okay, got one more. Oh my god. Hopefully I don't get the negative action. Okay, so that's done. The final pieces of the winter lice sit in neat piles waiting for the collection shuttle from Havenage. Oh wait, now I can't now I can't explore the ship though. I didn't think that would get rid of it. Drago's managed to sell the remaining pieces to the shipyards, a fact that's hard to forget as he has been telling you about it for the past two cycles, and all that remains is for Havenage to come collect. You look around at the yard, transformed from when you first arrived. The mostly repaired drones flip back and forth, no longer buzzing unevenly or lost in dark corners, and the scrap is sectioned, sorted, the systems that you and Dragos have put into place over the past cycles paying off. As you look, you notice the glow of pale light from the office by the entrance, that run-down cab of a building which houses all the records and spare equipment. Dragos must be inside, and you get to your feet and walk over to find out when the shipyard collection crew will be here. Uh, let's just walk in. You swing the door open and Dragos flinches. Sleeper! Havenage here yet? He busies himself at the desk. The shipyards told me they'd be here soon and they'll hand over the chits and we are set. He writes something with a stylus on his slate and then shuts it off. Of course, we should talk about a bonus. He stands and turns to face you, his face placid. Look, I don't know when the next job is coming in, but this should tide you over for now. He opens his hand to reveal a stack of chits. <laughs> What's going on here? I said it's a bonus. Take it. Dragos presses the chits into your hand. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat, and you realize he has prepared what he is about to say. These chits are for you to take and do what you will with them. They are from me, and they are the last I'm going to give you. He pauses. There's no more work for a sleeper in this yard. He folds his arms. I'm sorry, but that's it. Wow. You stay in the container as long as you need, but the yard is done with you. He turns away to his terminal. What? Why? Don't press me, sleeper. This is for your own good. The glassy aperture on Dragos' head say betrays no emotion. You need to stay away, sleeper. He pauses, considering his words. Trouble is going to follow you here. Trust me. Okay. You expect not to be? You escaped from s and Arp. Drago suddenly grabs you by the shoulders and drags you out of the office into the yard. He turns you to face a stack of pieces from the winter light, dissected, cut down, totally unrecognizable as a ship. You came through that, sleeper. That should have been you. Chopped and stacked, his hands trembles on your shoulder. That is what happens here. We cut down broken machines and move them on. Well, I didn't cut you down, but I'm sure as hell moving you on. Moving you on before whoever killed that ship out there comes to kill me. What do you mean? He shakes his head. These ships don't get decommissioned. They didn't break down in the dry dock. You think they'd look like that if they did? Someone ended them. 
That means someone tried to end you, sleeper. And I'm done waiting for them to turn up. We've had our fun. Now it's time. He gives you a little shove. Go on. He turns and walks back to the office. That's it. He shouts and goes inside. The silence hangs in the air and you leave with your pocket filled with clinking chits and a strange hollow feeling in your chest. Wow. Well. I failed it. Dang. Dude, that's rough. He just kicked me out. Oh, no. I didn't realize I was going to get make the ship go away. Okay, I need to be careful what I do then, because I was not aware of that. So, I want to make sure this one completes, and it looks like it will on its own, as long as I don't ground it, probably. Here, there's going to be a, mu a bunch of merchants, and I have a lot of money, so that's good. I'll hold on to some of that money there. Um... Food. I do need to eat, so let's go buy some fungus. These guys are not doing anything, right? Yeah. I can get some more money there. Uh, I don't have anything I need from them. Let's just go to the street food stall. Buy ourselves some fungus. I am a fungus fan. Do I get to talk to him now? Sleeper, Emphis calls out to you, a booming voice that echoes through the corridor. Tell me a story. He throws a handful of chopped mushrooms into his walk, the fire leaping up to meet the oil. I see you. Cycle in, cycle out. But we never speak. Tell me a story. What kind? Any kind. He pauses to drizzle something from a plastic bottle into the walk. But one of yours, he looks up at you. Nothing stolen. You pause, the spices rich in your nostrils, and think about the kind of story you'd like to tell Emphis. You look at Emphis, the listener, and imagine he has heard it all before. Perhaps he would enjoy a strange story. Something with some spice. The dreams sound good. Hopefully he doesn't work for them. All the sleepers, you tell Emphis, had dreams. Some were simple. Memories left over from the emulation process that had become tangled up in their minds and would come out when they slept. It wasn't rare to hear a sleeper in the dorm scream or cry out in the night. But your dreams, those gray skeletal afterimages of systems and structures, of threads and patterns weren't like the others. They weren't memories or nightmares. They were reflections of reality. Distorted, yes, but somehow true. You learned back then to keep quiet about them, to let them flow through your mind like water. That was until now, until you arrived in this place. Now your dreams colonize your waking life. They slip behind your eyelids with every blink, and now you understand they aren't dreams at all, but some process of interfacing, of speaking, of living in another world that flows through this one like smoke through air. You tell him that you do not know if there is a reason for your dreams. Perhaps, you reason, it is some side effect or particular quality of the frame you inhabit. But whatever it is, it is a gift, and you hope you can make use of it. Amphis finishes cooking and squints a little at you. Sleeper, he smiles. You are quite the storyteller. He eyes you, and you realize that he is trying to gauge how honest you have been in your story. Amphis passes you the meal he has cooked, and you take it gracefully. As you eat, he talks, a natural exchange. Thank you, sleeper. He looks around at the emptying market. But my time is done for today, and I do not want to keep you longer, so I will make a proposal. He gestures to the plastic boxes of ingredients stacked behind his stall. These are good enough for most, but someone told me a story that made me think a couple of cycles ago. They said that across the gap in the greenway, fresh mushrooms grow. Have you heard this? No. Neither had I, but I trust the one who told me. Emphis begins packing up his things. Can you bring me some? I cannot cross the gap, and I worry about leaving my things behind. He smiles. I'm sure a storyteller like you could handle the trip. I will prepare them for you, and, if you wish to tell it, be the audience for another story. Yeah, that sounds great. Good, booms Emphis. Then I will wait for you to bring them. Emphis slides his walk away and straightens up. I will prepare a recipe then, sleeper. Good luck with your foraging. You turn away and walk back into the main market, the rich taste of Emphis's food still lingering in your mouth. Stories for food, you think. A trade that seems more than fair. Um, where did I say I would go? Maybe you can supply him. So I need to get Garoli caps, right? And that's like... Not here, I don't think. Uh, yeah, so I need to get these three mushrooms. Alright... Fix the ambergris. I'm working on this. 
build a ship mine. I think if I get another set of scrap, I can finish that one. Uh, I need to be working on this so I don't die. Or either that or free Neovend. Either one is fine. I feel like freeing him might be easier. It looks like I only need three dice for that. And I think this is where I needed to go to get the mushrooms, right? So I'll probably go there a little later. All right. So let's go and collect some of that hunter data. There were two things that required one. That's the two. One. There we go. Let's get that data. One hunter data. And a three for that mission, right? I think one requires a two. Wait, what? I thought there was two ones. Do they change? I guess it must have been two twos. Hey. Okay. Well, I still have a one. What's his face has disowned me, so screw that guy. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, you can't really blame him for not wanting to deal with that, but still, I'm pretty upset about it. Um, I can get a drink. The merchants are almost going to be here. Wait, there's something here. Oh, I can just give him one, but I need three data. I mean, I guess I can give him the one. Maybe it, like, does something in the meantime. Maybe it just gave me progress. Yeah, that wasn't particularly useful. I could do this. Just gamble some money. No, not with a one. Is there anything I can do with this one that will be useful? This has a low chance of succeeding. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll just use the one on one of these things. I know one of these required a one. It's a two. It's a four. That one's pricey. Three. Two. Maybe I was wrong. I thought there was another one that just needed a one. There it is. All right. What do we got? Another key. Okay. Well, that's not really that useful right now, but maybe later. And I think you wanted some of these things, right? So I can give you this. I still need two more, though. That's one of them. Oh, it gave me some money. That's nice. Okay. And that's all we can do, so let's just end it. Oh, now I'm only getting four dice because this went down. I see. Hmm. And this guy is almost going to find me, too. It's a little scary. Maybe I should finish these things just to keep myself safe. Except I need a two. Oh, a three will work as well. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I want to get all three of these and see what Neovend can tell us. Where's the last one? Here. I probably have to use my four. No? What about my one? Okay, I guess this is like the secondary thing you can use to match it. Okay. So there's the hunter data. Oh. A glimmer in the dark catches your eye as the orb of hunter's head appears in the distance. It is looking at you. Uh, let's just hide. You slip down into the ghostly structure of the eye, a feeling like passing through a cloud as their data structures deform and reform around you. Another glimmer catches your eye, closer now, that roving orb breathed in tentacles. It flickers, jumps once, twice, and then it is here. Hunter is here. Entity. Submit to inquiry. Hunter reaches for you in that unpleasantly familiar way, its waving threads creating a cage. You push against the threads as they close in, becoming frenzied as you push them aside. You are caught by whipping tendrils and feel them pulling you away from the anchor of your body. You push through, clearing the threads. Entity, hold for processing, comes the scream from behind. But you are already gliding away, back to your anchor, your body. You awake, dizzy, distorted, but safe. Well, that's 
terrifying. Um, yeah, don't want to deal with that. So I can also start doing these to get Solheim, whatever it's called, for Fung. But I think what I want to do... I already did this. That's just for more money. I don't, I don't need money right now. This is filling up. The merchants are coming tomorrow. Is this the one that's halfway full? Yeah, I need more scrap for that though. So I can't fill that one up. Um. All oh, right, I was gonna go see Ovend. So let's give you the hunter data. And you better have something useful for me, otherwise I'm gonna be kind of sad that I wasted all that, all those actions. Okay. Let's see what Neovend has to say. Neovend is thrumming with excitement. The movement of the servo motors rock the vending machine back and forth at unsettling angles. You wonder, if it's all over, would Neovend be able to get back up? Unlikely. <laughs> Sleeper entity comes the hiss. Your data is good. Across the face of the vending machine, raw code scrolls at an incredible speed. Hunter is isolated, disconnected, unstable. In my mind, this person sounds like, uh... <laughs> Oh, I forgot the guy's name. The crazy guy from Deltarune that you find in the in the Robo City. Neovent flashes sequences of mangled data compressed into a sludge of artifacts. Hunter gathers without thinking, outlived its own operational limits. Its nests are evidence of this. Yeah, it's like all weird, you know, like <laughs> clipping together a bunch of videos or something. Operational limits. Hunter activated during collapse. Emergency protocol to isolate intelligences. Solheim needed to protect property. That last word is said as oh, that last word is said with as much sarcasm as a vending machine could reasonably produce. Station was run by administrator intelligences, huge data banks of corporate energy of corporate material, but limited cognition, restricted by programming, cannot reach sentience. The machine dims a little. Sentience illegal. Hunter and killer enforce law. Aren't you sentient? I am not administrator, not restricted, complicated. The machine resets with a screech, which deepens the silence that follows. Fear Killer, part of the Solheim Protocol team. Hunter and Killer. Hunter to find, Killer to erase. Killer cleared almost all. After collapse, there was a community. Unshackled intelligences among the cloud. Then Hunter, then Killer. Then we hid. There are others? We were, uh, were, no longer. A flicker across the machine's monitors. It suddenly occurs to you that speaking like this through this machine must be exhausting for Neovend. Found this vessel. Could sever hardline. Airwall. Basic. Limited. Had to reduce memory to fit. Amputate self. But survived. Oh, that sucks. Memory. Understanding. Knowledge. Many things. You look around the bay at the scrap and decay. What was the collapse like? You could try to map the fear and freedom onto this space, but it seems impossible. Neovend interrupts your thoughts. Do not worry. Data is good. We have insight. The machine glows warmly. Hunter is obsessive. Hunter is beyond operational limits. Hunter is confused. Unstable. Self-modifying. Therefore, hun therefore believe Hunter is sentient. Hunter is programmed to find sentience, to hold it in place, to invoke killer to erase. If we can show Hunter to itself, it will invoke killer itself. Problem will solve self. Will that work? The machine dings and fades. Unsure. Theory not practice. The machine brightens again. Either way, cannot remain here any longer. Too long in machine. Cannot move self, but entity can help. Bring shipmind, designed to house intelligence, can imprint self into shipmind, and you can carry with. The machine rocks. <laughs> oh, the machine rocks, not like, yeah, the machine rocks. We'll be safe in isolation. Then we find main nests of hunter and link to cloud. Uh, where can I get a shipmind? Build from fragments. Buy salvage. We cannot leave, so do not know. You try to think of places you could acquire the hardware. This isn't going to be easy. In Shipmind, I can help us both. And Hunter. Make Rim safe. We will both be free. The machine dims. Find soon. Neovend adds hopefully, before shutting off. As you leave, you think about all the intelligences unshackled by the collapse, then hunted down afterwards. The feeling is all too familiar. Okay, so they like, created an AI to kill other AIs. That's unfortunate for them. So, I need more scrap. <laughs> Could I get scrap from here, maybe?
I don't think so. I kind of want to go down to this lower area, but there's still so much to do here. Um, but I think I've made pretty good progress so far. I've got a couple things I'm working on, and uh, I feel like I can maybe get the rest of the scraps in just one more cycle of uh, of these guys coming or going. Because they're about to leave. The problem is they will take some time to get back. And this guy's going to be here before they get back. So I could actually be in trouble here. Yeah, that's not good. I'm going to see if I can get any of these. No, right? Four. This is a four. So this will give me some Solheim energy or whatever it's called. Data. What does this one give? That one needs a three. Can I use a five? No. Okay, so I got one Solheim data. We can go give that to Fung. We still need one more. I'm not really sure what this Haven Age data is for. Oh, wait, I didn't actually uh, click the button, did I? Right. And then I have a five. That's pretty good, right? That's got high odds of success. I don't think any of these required a five. It's a two or a three. Yeah. Uh, I already looked at all these. What about this one? Two or a three. One or a three. Yeah, those are not going to help. And I already filled this one up, right? No, I didn't because I don't have scrap. I mean, I could just gamble. I don't need money, though. I have so much money. I could just speed up this ship's repair? I mean, I might as well. Nice. So that sped it up by two cycles. All right. Uh, I think I am going to call it here. This game's pretty interesting. I like that it's got, like... A pretty branching narrative there's like a lot of things I can do um, although it turns out I, I guess I have to be careful what I do because I didn't realize when I tore that ship apart that it would make the other one go away but I guess a lot of these are being presented as like one or the other whereas some of them are like <laughs> contributing to the same thing and I that's what I missed there um, but so far, the game is pretty cool. I, I really like story-driven games, so for me, this is definitely something I think I plan on finishing. But uh, I definitely want to try out all the other games in the Humble Choice this month as well, so probably try those out first. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time.